Hello, everyone. Welcome to Clear Perspective. I'm Songwing Li. The United Nations COP26 Climate Change Conference opened on Monday in Glasgow, UK. Before the conference, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres issued a statement that the climate crisis is a code red for humanity, and said. If governments, especially G20 governments, do not stand up and lead this effort, we are headed for terrible human suffering. Biden said in a speech at the summit, "Climate change is already ravaging the world. European and American countries are also scrambling to launch a radical emissions reduction agenda, and have promised to achieve zero emissions in 2050." Biden has always regarded climate change as his highest priority. Only a few hours after he was sworn in on January 20th, he signed an executive order for the United States to rejoin the Paris Climate Agreement. He did not even hesitate to send his climate envoy, former Secretary of State John Kerry, who is nearly 80 years old, to China to be publicly humiliated. He also hurriedly released Meng Wanzhou in exchange for Xi Jinping's cooperation on climate issues. In the words of the Chinese media, "Quote: Biden is obsessed with the climate issue. He is jumping up and down whenever it comes to issues like carbon emissions and environmental protection." This time, Biden would have liked to show the results of his dealings on carbon reduction with the CCP, the number one emitter in the world. But Xi Jinping was absent from both the G20 summit and the COP26 conference. Xi at least recorded a video for the G20 summit, but for the COP26 summit, he only sent a written statement. This undoubtedly must have felt like a slap in the face for the leftist governments of the West, which regard climate change as a top priority. Xi Jinping's contemptuous attitude, coupled with his public promise in September to reduce carbon emissions that has been reversed to increase coal production capacity because of the domestic power crisis. Is a severe blow to Biden. Under these circumstances, Biden publicly expressed disappointment at the press conference at the end of the Rome summit that China and Russia had not committed to addressing climate change. The climate issue has always been at the top of Biden's list when it comes to cooperating with the Chinese Communist Party, but this is just wishful thinking. There will never be a result. This is because the CCP will definitely use the climate issue as a bargaining chip to threaten the international community, either by easing some of the restrictions on Chinese technology companies, or by restricting its dealings with Taiwan. In short, Biden will never get what he wants from the CCP. As we can see, the radical left governments in the West are showing an unprecedented desperation on the climate issue. They are not only preaching climate crisis on all fronts, but also launching radical emission reduction plans. Although we are still under the pandemic, the question is: Is climate change really that terrible? Can the green energy they are promoting really solve these environmental problems? Speaking of climate change, let's start with the origin of the term. It was first used by former U.S. President George W. Bush in February 2002 to replace the term global warming. At that time, it caused dissatisfaction among environmentalists who felt that Bush had abandoned the concept of global warming and even betrayed them. But now it seems that Bush saved them, as the proposition of global warming has been increasingly questioned. The term global warming was popular in late 1980s and early 1990s. It was claimed that human carbon emissions were causing global warmings, and as human activity increased, global temperatures were rising, which would cause sea levels to rise. 
In 2006, former U.S. Vice President Al Gore starred in a documentary titled The Inconvenient Truth, which claimed that the Earth was already overheating. The documentary won the Oscar for Best Documentary at the 79th Annual Academy Awards, and Al Gore himself won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2007. In August, the IPCC released its sixth assessment report of climate change, indicating that global warming was worsening and that the 1.5 degrees Celsius cap set by leaders in 2015 was likely to be breached in 2030, 10 years earlier than first predicted. Politicians and the media then followed up, saying that climate hell was coming and that there was only one last chance to save the planet. However, there has been, in fact, no scientific evidence that CO2 is causing the Earth's warming. The data shows that humans emit about 6.5 billion tons of carbon dioxide each year while the 130 billion tons of carbon dioxide produced naturally is 20 times more than the amount produced by humans. This shows that the impact of humans on temperature is actually very limited. In 1900, there were as many heat waves in the United States as there are today. In 2009, the world experienced extreme cold weather, with heavy snowfall in China covering many provinces. On the other side of the globe, the United States snowfall also hit the record. It paralyzed the capital city of Washington, D.C. for several days. Gina D. Matyshev, academician of the Russian Academy of Science, recently concluded through his research that the global climate is now getting warmer but actually getting cooler. He said in an interview that mankind will usher in a little ice age, not global warming. There are also studies that show the global temperature change from January 1999 to December 2018 is plus or minus 0.07 degrees Celsius. There have been four little ice ages in Chinese history, where severe cold weather led to dynastic changes. David O'Reilly, a well-known Canadian scientist, said that Modern technology may not even be able to predict the weather accurately three days from now. How can scientists predict climate change in the next few decades or even centuries? In other words, there is no consensus among scientists and historians on the topic of global warming. This is why the term global warming has been changed to climate change. According to the media, former Vice President Al Gore owned a 10,000 square foot mansion in Nashville, Tennessee. The mansion has 20 rooms and 8 bathrooms. Energy consumption records show that his home's average monthly electricity bill in 2006 was 1,200. More than the average American household in the area spends in the year. It is no longer news that these so-called environmentalists travel and attend events on private jets and the luxury yachts with large emissions. So, can their green energy advocacy really reduce environmental pollution? The documentary Planet of the Humans reveals that renewable energy does not reduce environmental pollution. A playground-sized solar panel can only generate electricity for 10 families a year, and the process of making windmills and the solar panels is extremely environmentally unfriendly. Behind renewable energy power plants, a large amount of fossil fuel is still needed to support them. Since wind and solar energy are too limited by weather factors, a thermal power plant is needed as a backup. Once green energy becomes unavailable due to weather, the thermal power plant will have to be activated. But frequently switching a thermal power plant on and off will cause great damage to its equipment. Planet of the Humans also focuses on bioenergy. 
Bioenergy is a renewable energy source made from materials of biological origin. Many industry players have made a fortune from this. For example, a power plant can get 11 million in U.S. government funding in a year. Since bioenergy comes from crops or trees, the question arises as to whether food crops or cash crops that can produce the biofuels should be produced. Jean Ziegler was the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the right to food. He fears that biofuels will lead to more famine and says that using crops to make biofuels to replace gasoline is a crime against humanity. Biden launched a new U.S. energy industry policy on his first day in office, not only canceling the permit for the U.S.-Canada pipeline Keystone project, but also temporarily freezing oil and natural gas extraction on federal soil. The Green New Deal, advocated by the far-left Democrats, including AOC, proposes to completely phase out fossil fuels within 10 years and replace them with 100% renewable energy, such as wind and solar power. The Green New Deal also requires all U.S. homes to be refurbished within 10 years to meet new energy standards. Because the elimination of fossil fuels will put millions of people out of work, former President Trump has said that a green economy will lead to poverty. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you next time.